For this week's demo, we're going to be producing a movie poster using images that I've provided. The zip file attached has a Photoshop document that's already been set up for you guys to save a little bit of time. And we're going to be learning some new tools today. One of them is the Liquify tool. We're going to be making a poster for Rumpelstiltskin. And I'm going to start by editing the features of the um, woman in this Photoshop document. I'll just rename this layer, Face. And I'll keep the Face layer selected, then go up to my Filter menu and select Liquify. The Liquify filter allows you to essentially move pixels around. A lot of magazines get in trouble for overusing this tool because you can shift people's waists in, you can elongate their arms, change the height of their cheekbones, etc. We're not going to do a beautification uh, with the Liquify tool today. Actually, we're just going to be changing her features so she looks less human because we are creating um, a Rumpelstiltskin poster. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. You can see there are tools on the left side of this Liquify filter uh, workspace. I'll zoom in here so you guys get a better idea of what I'm doing. And I'm going to make sure that I have the Forward Warp tool selected. You can see there's a shortcut key there, W, to access that tool. By default, you have the option of changing the size and pressure. You can find the sliders on the right side of your workspace. And I would say remove the, um, the weight of the pressure. Move it from 100 down to something closer to 20 or 25. The more pressure um, is, that's applied to this brush, the more pixels you move. And it's a little bit easier if you're mu moving pixels less as opposed to more. Uh, because at first, it's a bit hard to control the way the pixels work. Okay. So what I'll do now is I'm going to uh, use my brush, and I have my brush set around 40, and I'll hover my brush over her, her um, eyelids, okay? And uh, notice the center of my brush is over the eyelid. My brush is just beneath her eyebrow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift these eyebrows by clicking and dragging up. And I'm doing teeny tiny small brush strokes. So don't make them too long. It's a little harder to edit if you do really long brush strokes. So I'm going to slowly work my way around these eyebrows, lifting them. And especially focusing on lifting the outside, I want to make it look like she has sort of sinister eyebrows. So I'm just clicking below the eyebrow, dragging up, and you can see it shift the pixels. Okay, now if the eyebrows start to look a little funny, you can adjust them by uh, hovering the center of your brush over the eyebrow and dragging in whatever direction you want the pixels to end up. So if they get a little wiggly, uh, just drag in the opposite direction of the arc of the eyebrow. Okay, so I'll drag the inside of the eyebrows in. Okay, just a little bit to make it look like she's kind of scowling. And then I'll drag the outside of the eyebrows up. Okay, and again, you can kind of adjust these uh, if you get a little bit of wobbliness in the line of the eyebrow. Just uh, hover over the center, uh, the center of the brush over the eyebrow and drag in the direction it needs to move. Okay, so not too bad, but a pretty dramatic change here. I'll also be adjusting her eyes. I'll hover the center of my brush over the outside of each eye and click and drag outward. Okay, then I'll do the same thing for the inside of the eye. So I'm trying to make them sort of squinty and almond-shaped. And again, we're kind of working towards having her become slightly less human. 
Again, if anything looks a little wobbly, you can adjust it with really short brush strokes, focusing the center of the brush on the area that you want to edit the most. So you'll get more adjustments on the center as opposed to the outside of the brush. Okay, those eyes look pretty good. Now I'll just work my way down the face. I'm going to take this nose and I'll pinch it in a little bit just above the bulbous part of the nose. Okay, and I'm pinching it in by dragging from the outside of each side of the nose. Okay, and then I'll also drag the bulb of the nose down. Again, we're making her look a little less human here. And then I'll drag um, the nostrils outward. So I'll focus the center of my brush over each nostril and drag up and then drag out. So I'll drag up, drag out. You can continue to do this uh, however long you want to make it as dramatic as you would like. Uh, just remember the higher the nostril is, the more it looks like she's kind of snarling. Okay, just adjust that nose one more time. Okay, so that's quite a dramatic look. And then for the mouth, I'll be doing the same thing I did for the eyes. I'll drag the outside of the mouth out and uh, maybe just a little bit down to make it a little bit uncomfortable looking. Okay, and then I'll take the teeth. I'll make my brush just a little bit smaller. And uh, I'll, oops, too small. Sorry, it's reacting a little slowly to my shortcut keys. Okay, I'll take the uh, teeth, and what I'll do is hover the center of my brush over the teeth, and I'm going to drag down. Again, keeping these rel relatively short brush strokes, but I'm elongating the teeth is what I'm doing. Again, you just straighten things out by hovering the center of the brush over any pixels you want to move. And I like to just drag outward um, to kind of smooth out those pixels a little bit. Okay? So again, just short brush strokes so you have control over what you're doing. Alright, and you can get as dramatic as you like. I've seen these teeth kind of go crazy with all my students. So you're, you're free to do that. I'll just pinch in her eyes just a little bit more to make her a little grumpier looking. Okay? Alright, so we've adjusted her face. We're using the Liquify tool. Notice you can do anything with the Liquify tool. It's just we're making her look less like her. Um, once we're happy with how everything looks, we can say OK. That's in the upper right corner of this workspace. And uh, what I should see in Photoshop is that it has um, it has uh, adjusted. It's taking a moment here. Sorry. All right, perfect. So we have this new face, and she looks a little scary, but we're going to make her look a little bit scarier. If we look at the rest of the layers we have here, I have a tree that looks like a topiary, and I also have a black tree with an orange background. I'm going to make it to where her face looks like it's coming out of the background of that larger tree. Okay, and I'll just I'm gonna zoom in here just a tiny bit. Okay. All right, so what I'll do is I'm going to keep her face layer selected, and I'm going to hit a shortcut key. All right, Command-I. And what Command-I does is it allows you to invert the color of the selected image. Now, you can also use this shortcut key for masks, so it's not just for images, um, and it will invert the mask. So Command I, and I'm using a Mac. Uh, if you have a PC, I believe the shortcut is Control I. So Control I, Command I, those will invert the color. Okay, so you should see her become negative. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to build a mask. I'm going to do just a really quick selection using my polygonal lasso tool. Okay, I'm using that polygonal lasso tool. L is your shortcut key or shift L. And I'm going to create just a really simple selection around her face. I don't really need any other details. I'm just going to have her face coming out of that tree. So I'll make just a little selection using this simple selection tool. Remember, polygonal just means it's a straight sided shape. So I'll start on one point, I'll work my way around her face, just clicking to create corners, and I'll end at the original point. When you see that circle next to your polygonal lasso tool, click, and it will close your selection.
and you should now see marching ants. Okay, so once you have the marching ants visible, what we're going to do is load this as a mask. Alright, so I'll go to my layer panel, find the add layer mask icon, it's the white rectangle with a black circle in it. Click on that one time, and that should cut her features out of the uh, layer. Okay, so now we don't really have to worry about any edges that we miss if we use the paintbrush tool. Um, and so it just cuts out all those pixels, and I like to not have to worry about edges showing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to um, take a paintbrush, so I'll say, I'll press B for brush, okay, B for brush. <laughs> Sorry, my shortcuts are moving slow today on my computer. And I'll uh, take a black paintbrush, I'll just use 100% opacity at first, and I'm just going to drag over some of these white edges that I'm seeing around her features, just to give this a nice soft finish. Okay, nothing, nothing too, uh, too fancy, because actually we're going to create a different kind of mask in just a moment. Okay, so just paint along her features to hide the white areas. I'm going to hide the layer below that topiary so we can see this a little better. Okay, once you've created that mask, what we're going to do is we're going to go to that face layer, and I'm simply going to double click on the thumbnail for this layer. That should bring up the layer style dialog box. You can also access that through the layer menu. And what I'm going to do here is something a little bit different. We've seen this layer style dialog box before, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a blend if, and instead of blending for this selected layer, which is the face, I'm going to blend for the layer below. So I'm going to select underlying layer, and I'm going to shift the white point over. Okay, it's a little hard to see right here, but as I shift my white point over, what I should eventually see is the face disappears from the orange background that we have on this background image of the tree. Okay, so what it's telling um, Photoshop to do is to blend wherever we define the white point. Okay, and that means that anything that's brighter on the underlying layer, brighter than this gray tone that my white point's sitting at here, Anything that's brighter is going to be fully transparent for my face layer. And it's a little confusing to explain, but I think as you start to practice it, it becomes a little bit easier to understand. Uh, the other thing that you can do with this white point is you can split it so that you get a little bit of a feathered edge between any tones that are these darker grays. Okay, to split um, a pointer, hold down Option if you have a Mac, Alt if you have a PC, and just click and drag, and it'll separate this out. Okay, and that will be some softer edges. If you find that you're getting sort of pixelated hard edges, uh, that will help. Okay, so we don't really have to worry about creating this mask into this orange space, which is kind of nice to not have to think about. Okay, now that we have that, I'll say OK. And I'll move right along to the next uh, next layer, okay? And this is a topiary layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this topiary up above the face. So in my layers panel, I'll just drag that topiary layer, layer to copy three. I'll just call it topiary. I'll drag that above the face layer so that they're not interacting with each other. Okay, so with the topiary layer, I'm going to make a couple of copies of this eventually, and it's going to create sort of a foreground for our poster. But first, I need to eliminate the white sky. I'll do that using that blend if option again. I'll double click on my image thumbnail. I'll get my layer style options. And here, I'll do a blend if this layer for a white point. And once I blend that uh, sky so that it's gone. I'll also split this white, so again I'm holding down Option because I have a Mac, but it's Alt on a PC. I'll split that white point to see if I can get it to blend a little bit better into the background. We don't want the topiary to totally start to disappear. It's a little tricky in here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Good enough. 
right, for us not to have to manually build um, a mask. All right, so once we have that, I'm going to create a simple layer mask. So keeping that topiary layer selected, I'll navigate down to the bottom of the layers panel and select the add layer mask icon. That's the white rectangle with the black circle in it. And I'll take a, a tiny black paintbrush and just kind of blend out some of this extra stuff over here that we don't really need to see. Okay. If you overpaint, just remember you can press X to access the opposite color. Hopefully you're dealing with just black and white. Um, and that looks pretty good for my topiary. It doesn't have to be perfect because uh, this is going to be a poster, so it's going to be kind of blended in with a lot of different um, colors and adjustments. All right, so we have a nice little cutout of a topiary. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make a copy of this layer. I'll just use my Move tool. V is your shortcut key for the Move tool. And I'll hold down Option, Alt on a PC, and click and drag, and that should make a copy of my topiary layer. And now I see a copy appearing in my layers panel. So with these two copies of the topiary, what I'll do is I'll make the copy in the foreground large, and the copy in the background just a little bit smaller. Okay, you can either select these um, using the layer panel, okay, so you can alternate between these, or you can um, use the auto select option uh, in your control panel for your move tool. I don't usually use auto select because I find it is a little bit um, annoying if I have like transparent pixels and things like that, so I just use the layer panel. So I'll hit Command T on this top topiary layer and scale this up a bit. I'll press return to set that transformation. And then I'll select that second topiary and I'm going to keep that one a little bit shorter than the first one because we're trying to create a little bit of depth here in the foreground. And I'm going to try to have it to where these uh, go just beyond the center of the image. Okay. So I'll press return to set that transformation. I'll go back to this one and just move it a tiny bit. Okay, and you can always realign these if they don't look perfect uh, when we set these up. So I have two topiaries now. One's larger, one's smaller. I'm setting them up so that uh, they kind of look like there's a little bit of depth between them. Now, you can see in the image that the top topiary probably could use a little bit more masking. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the mask. Again, that's that white and black thumbnail here. I'm going to select the mask of this top layer. Press B to access my paintbrush and uh, make sure that my paintbrush is black. I can just press X if it's white. And uh, then I'll just paint into this mask and it blends really nicely. The beautiful thing about um, organic shapes like this is the texture really helps with blending. Okay, so I'll just blend so that these two topiaries sort of blend into each other and they're not too disruptive. Okay, and uh, you can kind of go back and forth again, pressing X if you need to make any adjustments. But that looks pretty good. Pretty simple way of masking. Okay, uh, so now I have these two topiaries, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two more and flip them onto the right side of the canvas. To do that, I need to select both layers. Okay, so I'll shift click to select both topiary layers in my layer panel. Shift click. And uh, then I'll just make a copy of these. So I'm going to make a copy using my layer panel. You can also option click drag release. It's really up to you. But in my layers panel, what I'll do is I'll just hold down option, alt if you have a PC. And I'll just drag these two layers up to the top of my layer panel, release my mouse. Oops. And that should give me copies, and it does. Notice when I create copies, the copies remain selected in my layers panel. So don't click anywhere, you want to keep them selected. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our edit options, uh, select transform, and we're going to flip these horizontally. Okay, so edit menu, transform, flip horizontally, and that's going to flip the two selected layers that we already have. All right, and the nice thing about that is uh, once they're flipped, we'll take our move tool, V is your shortcut key, and I'll hold shift while dragging this over, and they're going to be perfectly aligned, which is kind of nice. Okay, so I'm going to line up the center of these where they just kind of seamlessly meet in the middle here, 
and if they're not perfectly centered over the entire canvas, that's okay. Go to your Layers panel and select all four of these layers. You can Shift-click or um, Command-click, Control on a PC, and uh, I'm just going to Shift-click to select all four layers, and then I'll just use my Move tool and shift these over to center. Okay, and that's looking pretty good. It's starting to develop a little bit of depth, some mystery. Um, there's a color balance issue that we'll talk about in just a moment. Uh, but overall, we're developing sort of the foreground and background of a poster. And uh, it's important to keep in mind as we look at our layers panel, foreground and background. You really should be arranging all of your layers with the things that appear in the foreground at the top of your layers panel and those items that appear in the background in the back or the bottom of your layers panel. Uh, there are ways of blending and using lots of different masks, but in general I find that it's easiest if you have things that are in front of other items just at the top of the layer, um, top of the layers panel versus sort of trying to trick Photoshop into thinking things are behind other things. Okay, so we have a foreground, we have a background, and what we're actually going to create is another uh, layer that's going to give us a little image in the sky here. And I've done you a service. If I go to my paths panel, you'll see I've created a path for you called castle. Okay, so we're going to create a little castle graphic here in the background so you get an idea of how you can use graphics in Photoshop and create your own. So what I'll do is I'll go back to my layers panel. I'm going to add a new layer. Okay, so I'll add a new layer and I'll call this layer Castle. So I know that I'm dealing with my castle here. There's lots of different ways of doing this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this transparent layer. I'm going to keep it selected. I'm going to go to my Paths panel. Make sure my Castle path is selected. I know it's selected because I can see it on my um, canvas go back to my layers panel and at this point I'm going to load two layer masks. So I'm going to click on my add layer mask icon twice and that will load that vector castle as a vector mask here. With that created what I'm going to do to make the vector visible is I'm going to select the image of my layer, that's that transparent thumbnail over here, so I'm clicking on that one time to select it, and I'll access my gradient tool, G is your shortcut key for the gradient tool, and I'm going to make sure my foreground color is black, look at my gradient tool options, and I'm going to select the black to transparent gradient. That should be your second option in the flyout menu uh, for your gradient swatches here in the control panel for that gradient tool. All right, so once I have my gradient tool selected, it's going black to transparent. I know it's transparent because I'm seeing the grid. I'm just going to go where my castle is and I'm going to click and drag straight down. Okay, click and drag straight down. And what I should see is a castle graphic appear. Um, if you drag too far, you're going to get a black castle, so I do a very short drag. And uh, notice we get this lovely little castle. And it's a nice little graphic to add into the backdrop. Okay. Now if I zoom in here, I can see that my castle is um, struggling with the edge of the tree here. If I wanted to get a really clean mask, I could do the same thing I was doing before. I could double click on the image thumbnail for this layer and do a blend if underlying layer, oops, sorry, blend if underlying layer uh, black point, and just shift that black point over, and that'll give me this nice blend where it doesn't look like either of these layers is overlapping one another. Um, and that's really nice because, you know, you always want to trick the audience into believing that this space actually exists. So you don't really want those kind of messy edges. Okay, so we used a lot of Blendif today. We've used vectors. We've created just regular paths. We've even inverted color. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to do, actually I'm noticing my topiaries are a little high, so I'm getting this white space. So I'm just going to drag those down. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do an adjustment layer, and then we'll add text. So I'll make sure I have the top of my layers uh, selected. 
and uh, I'll go up to my uh, black and white adjustment which is found in my adjustments panel it's the third icon on the second row I'll click on that one time that should give me a new black and white adjustment layer and notice black and white adjustments are kind of fun they uh, respond to the colors already embedded in your um, image so you can adjust this um, I'm just going to going to adjust the reds some students will find that they want it really dark some will find they want it super bright uh, it's totally up to you how you adjust this but let's make it all black and white because the face is blue the backgrounds orange the topiaries are green so we don't really want to have to uh, color balance all of those in fact it might be impossible so I'll add a black and white adjustment layer and then the last thing I'll do is I'll add color before I apply the text okay so to add color to an image like this I'll just create a new layer okay create a new layer I'll call it color and what I'm going to do with this new layer is I'm simply going to change the blending mode of this colored layer I'm going to change it from normal to color and when I do that uh, I can then take colors and I'll just use my gradient tool because you guys can see it really quickly take my gradient tool select a couple of colors that I might use okay so I'll, I'll apply this to that layer and look at what happens when I have an oops have an adjustment layer or a blend mode so the blend mode is allowing this color to kind of fill in the tones of your image and it's really fun you're not limited to using a gradient I'm just using a gradient because it's fast <laughs> for your demo uh, but you can use anything you want you could use a colored paintbrush and change the tones of everything um, you could also do a radial gradient instead of a linear gradient but this is what a color blend mode allows you to do it applies a color to the tones across the image okay so it's kind of a fun a fun technique and if it's too bright or too saturated you can always change the opacity of a color layer and just bring that down to make it a little more subtle okay all right the last thing I'll do is I'll take my type tool T is your shortcut key and I'm gonna type the title Rumpelstiltskin onto this page okay when I type it's really hard to see because if I look at my control panel my type is actually black so I'm gonna find that little black swatch you might have a colored swatch uh, if you've used this before I'm gonna find that swatch and I'm going to uh, change the color to something that you can actually see okay and I'll also change the size to let's try 30 Okay, I'll just center this. And you can change, uh, sorry about that. You can change the uh, typeface as well. So the control panel for the, the type tool appears at the top of your workspace. I'll just change this real quick so that I can read it and uh, if it's still hard to read try making it larger okay so try changing the size of the type if you ever want to edit this you do have to go back to the type tool and click directly on uh, the text otherwise it's going to create a new type layer but try changing scale um, and you can also add things like effects okay so you can just select the type and um, or the type layer and add effects which you can find at the bottom of the layers panel so there are things like uh, outer glow or drop shadow sometimes that helps make text stand out a little bit more from its background okay but uh, this is your demo for the week so I hope you enjoyed it we've kind of created a simple composition using a lot of different tools in Photoshop and um, I look forward to our future demos thank you